Welcome to another part of Beacon Pines, the best story game that I've played in a long time, and this is another emotional episode. I loved this playthrough, and this is another branch of the story and another ending. But is it the ending that we want? Hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's find out together. As always, if you like me reading to you, then be sure to check out my free ASMR audiobook channel in the info, and follow me on Instagram for updates. Enjoy the video. I was curious what would happen here, so we're going to start here. The clouds began to break. Revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlit, moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. I've actually done pretty well not to make too many mistakes. There's, there's been a lot of reading. Sure, you can meet Rollo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rollo I would tell him about... Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Promised you'd tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you gotta tell me. Okay. We can come to the true house and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Lucas saw Max skulking by the gate. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate. A looming mansion. Rich, reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. That's Ares, ah, that's Ares Valentine. Don't steal my white lines, Dad. Sorry. That's Ares Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned. Nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. That means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. This is what I was talking about. Beck's voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when all this inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. Can't wait to see the look on that Arube Kerr's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. Still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting Shady. But that's just flat out super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all of this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask, hair pushing out from all corners. <gasps> Family. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Grandma. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Ares a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Whoa. 
I was thinking it had to be someone. I think it's going to be like Luca's mom or dad or something. Wow, grand, huh? What big ears you have. Luca sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. What's wrong? You look like you see the ghost. Oh, yawn, excuse me, banana. Why weren't you scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was... your gran? Yeah. Okay, well... I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the tree house and figure things out. Lead the way. Back so cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our I's, crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything's accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the lover. He snatched the pads and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. Would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility. Then broke into laughter as they walked away. Ha! Ha ha ha! Hi, Mr. Nuncred. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give them a good hard bop right in the kisser. Our grand cat tells me to keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your grand is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. Right. Running home, running free, back to the place where I'm supposed to be as a musical. Head back. Yeah, Luca. As a musical. We're to my secret tree house. Be as quiet as a mouse. Oh, this is nice. The tree house is just a little further run from here. So what's your buddy Rollo like? Rollo, he's... Rollo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I just never thought about her. Lost some energy. It's fine though, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the power harvest. It's about time, t damn time you tell- It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thingy is. It's a kind of long story, and I'm a little uh, Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Ooh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal. To us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine grew. And grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew round it. Most everyone in town ever worked for Sharp or Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. Sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharp or Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water. Or air. Or soil. Nobody knows. 
that all the crops died and everyone blamed the valentines the foul harvest yeah valentine fertilizer went out of business half the town lost their jobs sheesh sheesh hey remember when everyone was saying sheesh what happened to that the next year the crops came back but something was different you plant a crop do everything right and a sort of a crap shoot what happens no one knows why nope i take it rollo's farm got the short end of the stick yep for some reason their farm was hit harder than others it sucks things haven't gotten better since perennial harvest came to town the beacon pines reborn initiative yep first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub they even put us up in hotels, one town over for a week, while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm. We better get going. What did they do? Conspire a swath? Hey, it's about damn time. In a minute, how many days? Come in, come in. <laughs> I was about to give up and go home. Who's new, kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rollo. I <laughs> see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rollo waggled his head with pride. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. <laughs> You'll find we've spared no expense. Isn't that a Jurassic Park reference? I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? No. Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. What do we do? Hit it? Ah. Missed. Missed. I think. junk in the first place. There's a guy in town named Jeff who tr trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, you sure we can trust new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, yeah, Luca, you promised to fill me in about Valentine Warehouse. Um, Luca sucked in a long breath. So like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? Don't think so. Seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah, yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran. 
wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rollo let out a low whistle, and they went there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meet-up. So let me get this straight. It's an operation in full swing at Palantine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit, talking to Heiress Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town's kind of awesome. Rollo and Luca shot Becca look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude. Aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran, and she tried to murder you? First of all, and for the last time, they're under aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask Graham was wearing wasn't damaged. <gasps> Who is it? Could have had another one. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your grand's weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. 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 What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your gran isn't from here. No, she came a few months back to take care of me after. After his mum went missing. Did you know your gran before? Not really, no. Been there since I'd seen her. Oh my god, what if it's not his gran? Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. Just saying. Sounds like strange stuff's been happening since she showed up. Could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your gran is hiding something. And Power always says folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. <gasps> the room. If Gran really is hiding something, don't you think I would notice by now? It's kind of the whole point of hiding something. Guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you through tomorrow when the coast is clear. We can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. Me too. In a game, that is. You can count me in. Who doesn't love snooping around and learning stuff in games? Snoop! Doggy dog! Chapter 6 Secret Leia Leia? Leia? Princess? Summer forged ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What time is it? PJs! Alright, alright, keep your hair on. <laughs> Rollo, what on earth is that? Huh? That ridiculous thing on your head. Well, this helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more than one of those. You're gonna need, you're gonna need a lot more of those. Ah, oh, so tired, sorry. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. Coast's clear. Yeah, whatever she's been up to this week, it's keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luke and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were a gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it? Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Aha! He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. And maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, 
Any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, brother. Trap. May it be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there any way your grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has berry bushes. Who has ever thought? I'm going to take this important thing and hook it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well... She is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway, I, I can't reach the latch. A look of realisation crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted to turn towards the kitchen. Time to shine, baby. <laughs> ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. Hey, it's me, Detective Willy Donger. And now I shall proceed with... Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rollo's back. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining, hurts there. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything less. The only distinct feature was its impeccability. But that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and... As Beck pulled one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Seems like your grand's been doing some remodeling. Dude. Only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds. And superheroes. So which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jump to conclusions. Let's take a look around. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you going to read it? I... Here, let me help. Oh, I love the music in this scene. Rollo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He 
whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. The patient shows further signs of paleness in malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rollo looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy? Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Numcreed's name. Where? Rollo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in margins? Could it be contagious? Mr. Willoughby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions? It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Rollo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. What does it say next? Rollo rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit. Luca slammed the drawer shut. Luca swearing. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town. Intersped with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure kept herself busy. <laughs> is your gran a serial killer? <laughs> I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town. Out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My mums are both on here. Both with question marks. Gas Valentine has a question mark. Heiress has a question mark that's been crossed out. Um, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. Hmm, a punch bag is that? Oh, yo! Look how cute he looks, how quick can I do it? Get it, Luther, get it! Talented, eh? Explosive and jam jars. 
what's in the jam, Gran? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your Gran making? Incendiary. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Rollo casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And... Ink. What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Uh-huh. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Miss Fratello. A grand jam gram. <laughs> it says, Last night I used the disguise Ares provided to scout location. Timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. It's a more a bombshell than a bomb. Alright. You knew here, so I'll let it slide. I'm the bad guy, joke guy around here. treasure map Rollo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fool the logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn to it. Starts at the entrance of town. And if we follow it, Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square. That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Although that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives. So it's not hidden treasure. Real bummer. Rollo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? Festival? <gasps> Gulp. Did you just say gulp? <laughs> this feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the centre of town. She's gonna blow up the festival? Not if we stop her. <gasps> uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was that? the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh. Quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. They became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. She's gonna see that it's open. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing they'd been holding their breath, all three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? A final few footsteps. 
steps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rollo tackled the man to the ground. Rollo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap. I mean... Holy crap, Rollo, that was awesome. <laughs> Wait, did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. The shock clobbered him good, Rollo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. It's the man from the, um, place that we delivered jam to. Mr. Tolliver? Chapter 7 The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They had run the classic good cop, chill cop or hard cop. Chill cop. Well, one of these would have been harder to get. Hard, probably. Let's do chill cop, hard cop. Rollo brandished, brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. I've read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery draw. Well, well, well. Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver? He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. How I'd be asking the questions here, punk. Now, hold on, let's just calm down. 
Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. I can imagine Rollo turning into like a northern Batman. <laughs> looks like, <laughs> looks like you're sweating. Eh? You sweating? I'm Batman. The doubtful expression on back. Beck and Luca's face transformed into awe. We can do this my way. Or let's just say I've never needed another way. Rollo hitting his stride was now channeling over a detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. Now dance! What? I don't even... Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. <laughs> You've tied me down. How on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk. Spill the beans! What are you doing poking around this house? I'm here to help Juniper. I need to make sure everything's ready. Ah, oh, so you're in cahoots with Gran? Gr Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? Good lord. He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you, you've got it all wrong. Where is she? She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's where... His voice faded to a whisper. The town began. Where it all began. What is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rollo. I think you went a little too hard on him. What did I say about Sauce? It's where the town began? We need more information. Yeah, but we'd better not push Mr. Tolliver any further. Is there anyone else who might know more? I mean, like, what's the difference between father and further? I see father, further, push them further a lot more, like, often in games recently, but I always feel like it's further. Further. Father. What about History Museum? Just got set up for festival. Nah, that tent was put up for the Valentines. Everything that does a bunch of flaff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library? If there's any information about this source thing, Kaido can help us. Let's go get some answers. Kaido, so cute. I need like plushies of all of these characters. Please be compliant if you're watching. Like 100% Luca, Kaido. Plushies or like figures, figurines, something. Villager stuff, you know? That's a dang nice library. Thanks. We work hard on it. Aren't you a little young to be a librarian? Oh, um... Kiddo hung out here so much eventually they gave him a set of kids. I just keep an eye on the place for Miss Novak sometimes. He got you working for free? It's quiet, and I get access to all the books I can read. What more could a person want? Fair enough. What can I do for you all? a favor. All of now we get into like multiple conversations. Now there's like three of us here and so many characters. Like all of the little, ew, ew, like the sort of Animal Crossing text speak is um, like really gives you a sense of the character that's doing it. I already told you, and Rollo. I can't put you any higher on the wait list for the next Tank Atomic. And if you're here with more candy, I'll have you know I can't be bought. I call it a personal code of conscience. Actually, we're looking to do some research. 
Now you speak my language. What are you looking for? That's the thing. I really sort of don't know. What you got on History of Town? Hmm. There's the county record archives. What's in those? Birth, stats, newspaper clicking, stuff like that. Pretty boring. But they do go all the way back to when the town was founded. Great. We'll start there. Wow. Chapter 8. Six feet under, three towns over. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old country, county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a cork board threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the last. But the, old, the old map, with a symbol of explosives and town square, made it difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are going to pop. We'll have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm going to end up in one of those asinine death records. Rollo Cotter lived a full and wonderful life. Till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Rollo shut his book with an assertive nod. If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be a boring county record that kills you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rollo muttered under his breath. You're a county record. Really? It's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be the footnote in history. Just like... Beck slammed her finger down on the open page. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hell, hell, hell. We're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and... Something tickled in the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name? In the abet? Jay Hartford. From the Burkeville Tribune, 20 years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Jay Hartford. That's my grand's name. Juniper Hartford. Maybe there were two Jay Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, Lou Hartford. My, my mum's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. If your grand's six feet under, three towns over, then who am I living with? <sighs> the question hung in the air. What if it's not his grand? That would be crazy. All right, gang, I gotta close up for the night. Beck rubbed her eyes. How late is it? Almost 10. Oh crap, Pa's gonna kill me. Gotta go. Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay. Let's meet up as early as we can at festival. What are you gonna do about the unconscious man in your basement? I think of something. Leg it. Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. If he was lucky, Gran or whoever it was hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver. Tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. <gasps> he held perfectly still and listened closely. 
she was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Gran. Like she wouldn't have come in here and seen it. <gasps> He's gone. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace. Or maybe Gran knew everything. What do I do? Luca's hungry stomach groaned. Not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Okay, I can figure this out. Just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. He flipped the lid to read the label. What's in it, though? <laughs> Mr. Nuncrude. <laughs> okay, now I can think. So if Gran knows we tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing's wrong. Gran will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when it was done. Go to sleep. Oh, I don't like that we ate that jam. What's gonna happen? Oh, she's gone. Gran? Okay, stick to the plan. Go to bed. Play it cool. As Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Come on, legs. Just a few more steps. <laughs> Luca groaned and tried to move. His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips he mumbled just before falling asleep. The jam. Sweet boy. What did you get yourself into? Rest now. Let me handle everything. Gran's got to be good. I think she's good. If anything, more of a freedom fighter or something. Chapter 9. A speech to end all speeches. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncrede? Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. Back to reality. The festival. Can we not go in the secret room? Festival time. Where have you been? I, um, Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for secret conspirators. Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncrude. Put me to sleep. Whoa. Ho ho. Sly devil. 
sly. Look at that little picture, so cute. I think she's trying to remove him from equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We looked around, but haven't seen anything odd. Your grand's nowhere to be found. But Mr. Noncrete's just loafing around waiting for speech. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone's gathering at the stage. Let's get moving. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. Um, is this thing... Um, hello, Beacon Pines. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and... I suppose you already know that. Um, yes, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to recognise someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be where it is today without my father... Sharper Valentine. I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. Even that's more than the old codger deserved. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. Right, where was I? Uh... William Kerr bounded on stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Gus Valentine, everyone. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear it for our mayor. What a great turnout. Yo, imagine living in a town with just this many people in. Ah, oh, heck. I didn't prepare anything. But I suppose I could say a few words. It would be a shame to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Community, conviction, commitment. These are the things we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Change is a powerful thing. It's inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. And I am daggum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip which brought me to a small town would change my life forever. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away a single tear. From the second I set foot in Beacon Pines, something about this place held me captive. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me recognize the potential of this place. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. He thumped the podium to emphasize each word. Community, conviction, commitment. Change. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing's more important to you all than community. And Perennial Harvest is a community first and foremost. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. His voice began to build to a crescendo. We now walk hand in hand into a future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I'm tickled pink we'll be all making that choice together. How great is that? 
Just imagine what we can accomplish. <gasps> what was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry. A little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remained calm. Mr. Kerr quickly flipped through his note cards. What was I? Through all my travels, I've learned one true thing. One always reaps what they sow. We have all planted a lot of good in this town. And so it is with a happy heart that I can proclaim. He raised his hands to the heavens. Our harvest. At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd instantly, freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end on a stage with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end? There's that ice again. Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything. Maybe we should just quit. Maybe you should close the book, walk away, and never think of me again. No, I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Flight at the MCDC might get us somewhere. But maybe whilst we're on this line here, let's come back. Be good cop. Sly cop. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. What? What's going on here? You... You're that mood will go. Please, call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. Seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Cran. This was going to be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who could suspect a kid? Suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. That had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. You understand. You never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. Turns out we're both here to... Beck twirled her hand as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal's nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. <sighs> she sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out what we're going to destroy the source, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. You're sure you can finish up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good. Right, there's one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, nothing really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. Wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a partial word, but Juniper dismissed it. it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and nowhere to put it. It's got to mean something, right? Good thinking. 
You should probably go back that out. I got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to back with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver had a candy shelf. But all he ever sells us is apples. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. The password, Rollo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Toller about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Okay. What's another word for underground? Buried. Covered. Could it be cover-up? Maybe it's one of the, those each letter is a number things. U would be 21. N would be 14. D would be... Ah. It's an anagram. non creed drugstore. Ah. Luca and Beck looked at Rollo with amazement. Rollo, that was incredible. Well, it's either that or Kren's new drugstore. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? I love ciphers. I guess we know where to go next. Let's go! What are you doing here? You scared me half to death. Sorry. <laughs> you kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? N nope. He got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man will be late to his own funeral. Bye. No. Zoom. You're late, Augustus. Uh, sorry, sister. I was caught up with work. Work? You. I had a few more details to lock down for festival. Oh. oh what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think... Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings, installing you as mayor so you could make friends. Your job's to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone heiress and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. It's just temporary. The glow can be seen from our damn backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Heiress's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town's going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be part of that future? Or be forgotten and past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus. But you will always... Just be a Gus. Good night, Heiress. 
I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. She's still here reading this whole time. Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do a damn thing about it. I do hate it when the villain makes a good point. It's the secret to a good villain. Who's in the diner? Locked. Nuncreed's store. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hello, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncreed. Is he still in there? I'm afraid not. Where'd you get the candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life that we might not always have family to rely on. Licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice would be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection, can you? What's your choice of confection, dear viewer? What's your favourite sweet? Would you like a sweetie? Oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> if you haven't seen that clip of uh, Chris Eubank. Would you, would you like a, a smarty? A sweetie? I like sour gobs. I'm certain you do. I always wondered why Mr. Nankri kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For some, it's as easy as cold hard cash. Well, he's right, it's locked. It's got to be more clues. Okay, let's see. Underground. Nuncreed's drugstore. The phone. Have you ever seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed, no? her hands on the glass to peek inside. That is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would that be a blinky keypad? Krenz nude rug store. I mean, underground secrets. The password. Beck flung open the door and they all squeezed in. Bill and Ted. Right, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground. Secrets. <laughs> Sounds like it did something. Great, now what? I guess we'll... <sighs> the inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. Suddenly, the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. I knew it. You knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth. Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic Issue 12 were real? Rollo, at one point or another, you've said about every technology ever discussed at Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. Looks like each of these has something written on them. Mining Operation Alpha. Guys have mines? Not that I know of. 
This town's all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Power always says you can only trust a miner up to a point when they hit gold. Not sure that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Pa. You don't always realize what he means till it's too late. Perennial harvest main office. Uh, that's where my mum works. What does she do? Science stuff. Is she involved in all this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. I bet she is. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Oh, that's where we were right at the beginning. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube go into the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. This game has been so good. Like, such an engaging story. And if it wasn't as well written as it is, it could kind of fall apart at the seams with it being this long as well, but damn, it's good. Um, this suit has a broken mask. Oh my god, I only just spotted that. It's the one he hit. Have we found our mystery warehouse creeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. If it walks like a non-creed and it talks like a non-creed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Why would Grandma be working with Nun Creed but then also drugging him? That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough of Hank Atomic to know my way around sci-fi tech. While those hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Ain't it mean in my ear? <laughs> Rollo cracks me up, dude. Rollo, what did you do? Yo, who's your favorite character? Leave in a comment as well, like... Favorite character overall and favorite character out of these three. Rollo, Beck, and Luca. I mean, Luca is just so adorable. But I actually love all three of these characters. Like, they're a great friend, friend group. What's it? I didn't even know yet. What's that? Hide. Where? There's nothing but weird tubes. Just get back. Shit. 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 Awesome. <laughs> We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them it was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. Like who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. We don't care about our skins. Hold on now, I like my skin. This all stops now, Nancrude. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know, your father and I were friends back before... He gestured toward the strange tubes. I'll, uh, this. That's a lie. It's true. I used to bounce you on my knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality. Complications. Life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent and hope oh, hell -bent. <laughs> The voice changes every time this character pops up, and then he disappears for three hours and I have to find it again. <clears throat> Both hell-bent on helping folks. He 
You're his sidekick. No. We were partners. He helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Uncreed let out a growl of a sigh. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharp Valentine comes to us. Says he's got an opportunity. He'd found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. The thing I could never get him to understand was... It's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. <laughs> Rollo is killing it, like, in this recent, like, couple of chapters. Such good writing. Walt loved being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to shop a Valentine, you'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharp is long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to this sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncreed took a menacing step towards the children. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. What? <laughs> you really don't know. My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's gonna disrupt the festival. Why would she? The color drained from Nuncreed's face. Uh, how does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She got maps, explosives, bad intentions, big man. Nuncreed grabbed Luca by the shoulders, his eyes frantic. You need to tell me what she's gonna do right now. She doesn't understand what it is she messing with. <laughs> tell me now. She's in danger, boy. I don't know. Uh, she had a map with a mark on the fountain, town square. The fountain? Wow. A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source. The heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... Dear God, she's gonna freeze us all. Y'all need to run. Run where? Away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. <laughs> Imagine traveling in tubes. That did not go how I expected. So... We're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. Huh? You good? Yep. Well... I love this town. Chapter 8 The Cold Hard Truth 
back leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera. She seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only point of references were glints of upcoming turns which approached with frightening speed, only to crom her gracefully along. She heard the tinny, distant echoes of Rollo's glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snuffled across her face, and she was flung into the cold. Hey. Hey. That was intense. Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids there. <laughs> Any idea where we are? Somewhere, somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got on any of us. Didn't feel like we travelled that far. Where did it all go? This place sucks. Why would anyone want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find I mean eh, only one way to find out. Don't give me that for us, sorry. Gotta catch eh, we gotta catch up to Nancreed. What are you doing? Sorry, Luca, it's like three in the morning. <laughs> I'm trying to finish the game. I think you went this way. I don't even know how I'm gonna put this out yet. Maybe all in one piece. I, I mean you'll know watching this now whether this is all one piece or in bits, but I feel like maybe just all in one and then people can just bookmark and watch stuff. We're in Beacon. That's where the house is. This is where the tree is. This is the grave. It's the upside down. This is our house. This is the Beacon Pine sign around here. This looks familiar. Maybe we can clear off the snow. No time. Nancrude's getting away. Oh, I wonder what it says. in the tanks. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of the town. I got it. It's obvious now. Mr. Longcreed's an alien. Rollo. Stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by travelling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective, kill us all and shapeshift into Beacon Pine Citizen of their choosing. You never really had me. But you very much lost me there. You get used to it. Let's keep moving. Can't examine stuff. Just gotta chase him, I suppose. Crunch, crunch, crunch. As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nuncreed inching cautiously towards a pit at its centre. He held his arms out gingerly as if approaching a beast in the wild. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognised what Nuncreed was after. Gran stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, you doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran. What's happening? Luca. You and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncreed turned back towards the kid's desperation in his eyes. Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rollo and back held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. I 
could just hand over that torch. You, you don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreed winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself. Making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. We just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way happened to line your pockets. No, that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. <gasps> the moment balanced on a knife's edge. Sp Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed, as if to give him the stage. In the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was necessary. This'll all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. Promise. She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where their loyalties fall. Juniper, no. Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The door echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, you must be willing to... Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. to Luca. Her attempt to shield him an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That's where they remain, fixed in place forever. And so our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now we just need to find a way to deal with the mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Thank you for watching. That was another ending, but not the ending we're going to stick with. There's a couple more parts still to come of Beacon Pines, and the next one is very, very emotional. Look out for that. Um, this game is just taken me by such surprise and exceeded all expectations. I hope you're enjoying it. I will see you in the next part. Thank you. Please do hit like and leave me a comment and let me know how you're enjoying this playthrough.